This week, the hotel inspector meets a B&B owner who's living in a 50s dream world. I love the 1950s. Let's try and recreate it here. Where the hotel rooms are more last century than 21st. I've actually graded my rooms. Yep. Awful, very awful and terrible. But can Alex establish a better future for number nine? I can't quite believe that I'm saying this to you. This is number nine, a six-bedroom B&B in one of Britain's busiest seaside towns, Torquay in Devon. It's both home and business to Rachel Roth, a 50s enthusiast who dreams of winding back the clock to a golden age. I love the 1950s. Clothes were lovely, people dressed nicely. I think it was the last decade of the 20th century that had any sort of style about it or elegance. Let's try and recreate it here. And what better location to express her passion than a quaint B&B &B in the heart of the English Riviera? I've always wanted to have a bed and breakfast and I've never been able to find anybody to do it with me. So I thought, well, blow this. I'm going to do it on my own. But after eight months of running number nine, Rachel has discovered that it's no piece of cake. Her occupancy rate has fallen to a dismal 17%, and Rachel is running out of time and money. I've put all my savings into this bed and breakfast. If I went under, I don't think I would ever recover. Rachel bought number nine hot on the heels of a failed relationship. At £355,000, the B&B &B was an expensive piece of retail therapy that has failed to cheer her up. A week after I moved here, I remember sitting in the garden and just burst into tears and thought, oh my God, what have I done? I've made a terrible mistake. Far from providing the new start she was hoping for, Rachel is now isolated and trapped within the empty B&B. I get very lonely when it's empty, yes, particularly as I don't... I, I still haven't met that many people in Torquay yet. Rachel's love affair with number nine is almost at an end, but she's determined to make it work. I'm 55 now. I haven't got many years left of my working life, so I, I, I want to go out with a bang, really. Charged with rescuing Rachel is Alex Polizzi, niece of the legendary hotelier Rocco Forte and owner of the award-winning Ensley Hotel in Devon. But will Alex be able to give number nine a successful future? You must be Alex. Hello, how nice, nice to, to meet you. Nice to meet you too, and I'm so pleased to have you here. Thank you very much. A very good journey. Even before Alex has a chance to take off her coat, Rachel checks her into the B&B's most expensive room. Room four sells for £50 per night. I've actually graded my rooms. Yep. Three categories. Awful, very awful and terrible. What am I in? Sorry, it was terrible. I think it's gone up to very awful because I did paint the bathroom. With so few guests, Rachel hasn't been able to afford any renovations to the B&B's six bedrooms. She needs to increase her occupancy rate in order to bring them into the 21st century. But what does the hotel inspector make of room four? First impressions are good because it's clean. I hate the fact it's so pink, however. I mean, pink, pink everywhere. It really is taking a theme too far. You have homemade shortbread made by Rachel with her compliments left on the tea tray, which is a lovely touch. So she's getting some things so right and other things just dramatically wrong. Once Alex has seen her room, Rachel is keen to show her all the faults and failings of the B&B, &B, room by room. Take a deep breath. <sighs> I'm poised. <laughs> right, there's been a leak up there and it hasn't been made good. Mm -hmm. I bought the bedspreads, they were curtains. 
It looks like someone was running a high-class bordello. It does. <laughs> and the horror continues downstairs. The guest lounge is cluttered with all sorts of 50s-esque paraphernalia, and the basement diner is looking outdated and uninviting. Look! Isn't that dreadful? But behind the laughter, Alex suspects that Rachel is struggling with the day-to-day -day pressures of running a guest house. It's time to uncover the truth. Since you've been open, are you covering the running costs of the house? Not at the moment, no. I've had to dip into my capital to cover the mortgage and the, and the expenses. Do you think you have a feeling yet about how much the house will annually cost you to run? I've never really worked it out. I shy away from figures, and that's my downfall. And it isn't only Rachel's finances that are suffering. Month after month, the running an empty hotel is beginning to take its emotional toll. You do get terribly down, and you just think that that phone is never going to ring again, and you know you're never going to be renting rooms out anymore. You know, and I get so low, I find it very difficult to motivate myself. You feel like crawling into bed, throwing the duvet over your head and not coming out for a week. I do, yes. <laughs> I know that. Yes, I with know. a bottle of wine. No, I know it would do. <laughs> yes. I know. I'm surprised by how much I like Rachel. I always get very irritated, usually, by people who don't take their businesses seriously. But she has an immense joie de vivre that is irresistible. And I have this immense desire to try and help her out, see if I can't give her a hand. Eight months ago, after a failed love affair, Rachel Roth bought number nine, a six-roomed bed and breakfast in Torquay that she hoped would mend her broken heart. But so far, the failing business hasn't lifted her spirits. If I went under, I don't think I would ever recover. I'd go into a a deep depression, and I don't want that to happen. There are over 45,000 bed spaces in the area around Torquay. Number nine is drowning in a sea of competition, leaving Rachel in financial trouble. At the moment, I do everything on my own because I can't afford to employ staff. And with Rachel's confidence at an all-time low, she's struggling to integrate herself into the local hospitality community. It is difficult being a single lady. I still haven't met that many people in Torquay yet. Having already been given the guided tour, Alex is ready to continue her investigation. The hotel inspector heads downstairs. Rachel has decorated the £50 per night room nine with her take on the 1950s. But what will Alex make of the room? There's a lot of clutter. You can hardly get to the bathroom door for a start. I don't really understand on what basis she wants this to be a 50s B&B. &B. As far as I can see, there's nothing 50s here, apart from some fashion plates on the walls. Even this armchair is more 70s than 50s, so we don't really have that much to build on. And as the hotel inspector prepares to call it a night, Rachel is left to wonder what Alex will make of her b and I'm very excited. I'm dying to hear what she says about the uh, bed and breakfast tomorrow morning. Don't care if, it's if she's critical. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I'm not going to be too upset. Well, I hope not anyway. The following morning, and Rachel is up to make sure all is perfect for her special guest. Will the early bird catch the worm? I'm just a little bit nervous this morning about uh, cooking the breakfast. I want it to look good. A decent breakfast is a crucial ingredient of a successful B&B. &B. But will Alex have any appetite after her night at number nine? I really had to force myself to go to sleep last night because I feel like there's something Rachel's not really telling me about the financial side because her costs aren't so high that it's not manageable. So there are some tough questions ahead for Rachel, but not before Alex has sampled her breakfast. 
Good morning, Good morning Alex. Rachel. How are, how are you this morning? Very well, thank you. Did you sleep all right? Very well indeed, thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. And I ate the shortbread this morning, which I really enjoyed. Did you? <laughs> yes, thank so you. So you won't want much breakfast. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> right. Rachel knows this is no time for mistakes, but a hungry hotel inspector is making her fret. I think it's very important to have a, a special pan for your scrambled egg. I didn't ask her how she wanted her bacon cooked. Does she like it crispy? Mm. Mm. Very, very quickly. There we are. Gosh, let's hope. Let's hope it's um, not too hard for her. Here goes. There you are. Thank you, Dom. Okay. Lovely. Would you like any sauce? No. Right. Thank you very Anything much. Anything else? Just a slice. Oh, of yes. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I'm sorry, I. I uh, failed to tell you, lots of preserves over there if you'd like some. Clearly a little nervous, Rachel has managed to get breakfast over with. But what's the verdict? How was it? How was the breakfast? Was Lo it okay? Lovely. And your bacon's very good quality. Right. So I approve. All in all, it tasted delicious and it was very nice having hot toast for a change. That's fantastic. You're really pleased. Yes. No, I enjoyed it. While Rachel clears up from breakfast, Alex is keen to see the guest lounge, which is more of a personal exhibition than public space. It's absolutely full of all of her stuff, and most of it I loathe. It looks like every holiday she's been on, she's brought back something. It feels far too personal. It's surrounded by all her photos. And it's just not somewhere I think that people would feel very at their ease. I certainly wouldn't if I was a paying guest. Now that Alex has got to the bottom of the decor, it's time to get to the bottom of the B&B's financial woes. It's time for Rachel to face the music. One of the things that is very clear to me is that you have got to stop burying your head in the sand about the financial side of this. So I want you to tell me, actually, how much money you borrowed to buy this house. I borrowed £160,000. And you're just paying back the interest at the moment? Yes. Are you up to date with paying back your interest? No. It turns out Rachel is three months behind on her payments, and her loan is also up for renewal, with hardly any guests. She's even struggling to make the B&B's monthly outgoings of £1,800. Now I know this, mm -hmm. we need to work backwards yes. from that. Did you do some research before you set your rates? I looked on the um, websites of other hotels and had a look what they were charging. And £45, £50 a night seemed to be the, uh, the, the norm. And have you been to see what these £45, £50 a night places are like? I haven't been inside, no. I've only looked on their websites. So Alex's concerns over the finances have been justified. In order to get this house in order, Rachel will have to take responsibility and tackle her books. Alex also wants to show Rachel what the standards are in Torquay's competitive market and introduce her to the local hotel community. First, though, she wants Rachel to focus on her own B&B. I want you to walk around as if you were a punter. I'm talking about making sure that the shower's regrouted, replacing cracked tiles, mm -hmm. doing some of the downstairs decorating. I want you to do a list of what you think in order of importance. Yes. A list so that we have something in front of us that we can yeah. tick off. I really should assign a morning to do it. And stop with your else. displacement activities, because you know what? It's easier to make wonderful, wonderful shortbread than it is to sit down I know. and do something like this. Rachel appears to be taking all of Alex's suggestions on board, but there's still one thorny issue left to discuss. Finally, I'm going to say something that I'm sure you're not going to be thrilled about. Your 1950s idea. I don't know necessarily whether that is the right way to take the bed and breakfast. I think what people want is something clean and modern with touches, with your personal touches that make it special. Mm. Your 1950s stuff is ephemera. It's all decorative and it's little bits and bobs. 
I, I, I see what you mean. I, 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 but, um, yeah, I, I don't want to get rid of all the pictures. Alex leaves number nine with the issue unresolved. And only time will tell if the hotel inspector's message has been heard. My head says to run away from here and never come back again. But in my heart, I know I've got to try and help Rachel. The only way I can do that, though, is if she pulls her head out of the sand and starts dealing with the realities of her situation. That was a difficult meeting, that. She doesn't seem very keen about the 50s. I, I, I thought it was a really good idea. As a new day is born, there's a change at number nine. Despite their failure to reach an agreement over the 50s theme, Alex's tough talk has struck a chord, and Rachel is organising her finances. Her top priority is to secure a new loan, and for the first time in months, Rachel sets up a long overdue meeting with her accountant. I really need to get these accounts sorted out, so I'm slightly worried about them. And despite her fears, the news is good. Uh, it's just a question of refining this a bit, right. getting it a, a, into a business plan mm -hmm. form. We, 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 can, we can make it all add up. Brilliant. It's an encouraging meeting, and Rachel returns to the B&B &B to tackle the other jobs left by Alex. The um, chest of drawers and the wardrobe, dump, redeck, and refurbish. Now then, bathroom. Oh dear. Not good at all. She looks around the B&B &B as if she were a guest. The exercise helps her focus and even reignites her passion for number nine. It's been three weeks and Alex is back in Torquay. Inside number nine, Rachel has a little surprise that she hopes will impress the hotel inspector. This is my new office and I want you to open it for me. Oh, you're alone. Here are some scissors. <laughs> you're alone, but I like you. I know, I am balloony, aren't I? Oh, my God. Right, I declare this office formally open. All right. Yay! <laughs> Come on wow. in. Right, new office. I've even painted it. I, I just re, you know, same colour, but anyway. I clean the windows. Yes, I bought a, a book. What you need well, anyway, to do yeah. in every room. What I need to do in each room. Here we are. Rachel, I am so proud of you. Yes, and then I burnt the midnight oil doing all this paperwork for you. Alex is encouraged by Rachel's progress with the finances, but it's only the first step. She now needs to up her occupancy rate and attract guests to number nine. Alex has secretly invited Visit Britain to grade the B&B, &B, as a star rating will offer much-needed marketing. But before that, there's still an awful lot of work to do. And Alex has a plan. She wants to take Rachel away from the confines of her B&B. &B. I think what I would like to do is take you out into Torquay. That sounds great. I'd like to show you some of your competition. I think it'd be helpful for you. Oh, it would. I've been, I've been trying to do this. I really want to see my competition. It's very difficult when you're, you know... I know, when you don't have an excuse. <laughs> That's right. That's okay. right. <laughs> she hopes to introduce Rachel to a social network of local industry partners. Rachel, come nice in. Nice you. Alex, please. First, the traditionally styled Marston, owned by Ian and Craig. Alex hopes this tour will make Rachel realise the key to successful hotel themes is simplicity. Lovely. Their king rooms sell for £58 per night. I love the wallpaper yes. and I love this red. We've chosen very traditional type furnishings, uh, some modern touches with uh, an iPod docking station and, and a flat screen TV. Next is the bay windowed four poster room which retails at £69 per night. It's lovely. Nice, warm colours. Yeah. Welcoming. This is important because I wanted you to see that there's a kind of uniformity of mm. theme. It's a great idea. Alex's message about the need for subtle themes seems to be getting through to Rachel. 
and she's also making some important contacts. A lot of the hotels all work together, um, particularly in the summertime where there's mm. an excess of customers and not enough bed spaces. That's good. We'll all contact each other yes. um, to pass guests amongst each other if, if one's full and the other one mm. isn't. Mm. Um, now I've met you, I'll be able to do that for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> To drive home to Rachel that the subtle theming can be profitable, Alex takes her to the Hillcroft, an internationally themed B&B. &B. Hello, I'm Rachel. Rachel. Rachel, I'm Stuart. Hello, Stuart. Karen. Its standard rooms sell for £75, a third more than the same rooms at number nine. This is the double bedroom of the Grand Suite. Their steadily improving occupancy rate is proof that people are prepared to pay more for the right accommodation. And this is the sitting room. This is another lovely room. Oh. And this is our Tuscany room. This is sort of standard double en suite. And you say this is standard? Room, this is a standard well, room. It, it's lovely. Oh, yes. I like the cubicle, the shower cubicle, the, the blue tiles. Aren't they nice? The Hillcroft's international theme means that each bedroom subtly reflects a different country in its decor. And this is Amsterdam. The owners have clearly hit on a successful formula, but by drawing comparisons to number nine, Rachel is left feeling down. I feel a bit daunted, to be perfectly honest. You know, you come to a place like this, you think, oh my God, my place is dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel. It's really awful. <laughs> oh, no, Doc. Well, the uh, thing is, we need something to aspire to. Yes. Every room has a theme, but it's not mm. over-themed. That's right. You know, there's things that we can take away with us mm. that are actually reassuring, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well as the mm -hmm. steep hill to climb. Yes, yes. <laughs> Alex had hoped that their trip to the competition would have inspired Rachel to move forward with updating number nine. Torquay Townhouse number nine is sinking in an ocean of B&Bs. With barely any customers and no profits to speak of, its lovelorn owner, Rachel Roth, is slipping deeper into despair. When the house is empty, I get very depressed and I don't feel like doing anything. She's failed to renovate any of the hotel's shabby interiors since buying the property eight months ago. I mean, pink, pink everywhere. It really is taking a theme too far. And is getting trounced by the competition. You come to a place like this, you think, oh, my God. My place is dreadful. <laughs> it's really awful. Alex had hoped that by showing Rachel what the nearby guest houses were offering, she'd be inspired to update number nine. But her plan appears to be faltering as Rachel leaves the Hillcroft B&B in a fragile state. How are you feeling, Rachel? Oh, a bit depressed, really. Are you? Yes, a bit down. I don't see how I could ever get my rooms to that sort of standard, you know, without having to spend an awful lot of money. I mean, they, they need to be decorated. It's going to take a long time, you know. Um, and I haven't got a lot of time. I'm sorry, doll. I didn't take you there to depress you. I just think it's good to know what's out there and it's good to be aware of the realities of the competition. Don't be downhearted. No. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a way to go before I let you be downhearted, OK? Alex's initial idea was to relaunch an updated number nine with a cocktail party once Visit Britain had rated the B&B. &B. But she puts her plans on hold and takes Rachel out for a heart-to-heart. -heart. Alex can't turn around the hotel unless Rachel puts her past behind her. When I bought the hotel, it was a very, very dark period for me, Alex. It was dreadful. Actually, looking back now, I was suffering from very, very bad depression. Rachel thought that buying number nine would be the medicine she needed, but the failure of her relationship has proved a bitter pill to swallow. Unfortunately, I've always, I've always been with the wrong man. I met this chap and it was the worst thing I, that ever, ever happened to me. I turned around one day and I said, you're not in love with me anymore, are you? 
Alex wants Rachel to start ruling with her head instead of her heart. If she can help her make a success of number nine, then Rachel might break this vicious cycle. Everything that we've talked about tonight, really, is about the past. Yes. And I want to talk about the future. Your unique selling point at the hotel is you. It's very important that you feel good and that you feel up because you have a fantastic character. Oh, You're thanks. You're very welcoming to people. You're yes. very generous-spirited, uh -huh. and it really shines through. And Alex has made one decision that's sure to put a smile on Rachel's face. Done some research. OK. And it turns out that there is a bit of a 50s market. Ah, I told you so, didn't Devon. I? <laughs> yes, done. So, although I can't quite believe that I'm saying this to you, because God knows telling anyone to do a themed hotel would not normally be what I'd do, but I am going to try and help you make it a 1950s. You're not. Yeah. So are you really? Yeah. <laughs> I am. To keep her promise, Alex will give room four and the dining area a makeover using a subtle 50s theme. The room will then act as a template which Rachel can copy when she updates the rest of the B&B. &B. When I woke up this morning, I thought, goodness gracious me, this is quite a responsibility. Because it's not just the problems with the bed and breakfast that we've got to try and sort out. It's a fact that the bed and breakfast and the success of it is so bound up in Rachel's sense of self-worth after what she's gone through. Alex has decided to go ahead with the cocktail party to relaunch number nine in six weeks' time. With the Visit Britain grading imminent, the hotel inspector needs to inspire Rachel into action. I hate all this leaflet stuff. Oh, so do I. Hate it. Yes. I would love you to write a one-size sheet that says your guide to Torquay and what to do that's nice around here. So when people ask you, mm -hmm. you can suggest it to people. And so I'd like to send you out and do some exploring. Yes. Sounds exciting. OK, <laughs> good. And with Rachel out of the way, it's on with some of the jobs she couldn't face. Alex has called on Rachel's sister, Jane, to help her declutter the over-personalised guest lounge. I think there's far too many photos of Rachel herself. Yeah. Guests have to feel comfortable That's coming right. in here. Yeah. But where do we start? Let's clear the mantelpiece. Yes. We'll give it a go and we'll see what we think. Okay. Yeah. I've come in to pick your brains. I hope okay. you don't mind. I will buy some fudge as well. <laughs> My name's Rachel. Now I've got a bed and breakfast. It's not far away. Let me give you my card. Yes, that proves I really have got a bed and breakfast here. <laughs> People are very friendly, very helpful. <laughs> thank you. OK, thank you. Bye. Do you know something? Talkie's quite nice. You know I'm going to get the blame for all this. I'm hoping it's <laughs> going to be you. Yes. I'm hoping so. Well, we can remove the sleeping cat on stool. <laughs> going to sleep through all this. By taking some of the personal items away, Alex believes the room will feel more inviting to guests. But crucially, It'll also help Rachel let go of the past. It all looks so much better already. I'm going to look forward to her reaction. Let's see when yeah. she comes back. I Do think you know, we better have a nice cup of tea, baby. I think that would be a very... I think we need a bottle of wine for her, actually. <laughs> Rachel has made the most of her tour of Torquay's tourist hotspots, and by the time she gets back, the New Look Lounge is ready to be unveiled. Can I open my eyes now? Yes. yes. Oh, my goodness me! <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Oh, did you think so? It's fantastic! Oh, good, I'm so pleased. Oh, it's lovely! <gasps> Up there. You've got lots of nice things. Yes. But they're being overcrowded. Oh, I know. By focusing on Rachel's more authentic items, the lounge now feels less personal and more 50s chic. So now she likes it, do you still want me to take the blame? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> well, I think we, we can both take a little credit there, Yay, Alex. Well done, Jane. <laughs> so Alex has managed to lift Rachel's spirits. But with the relaunch and the Visit Britain inspection just weeks away, Rachel must take the helm and steer number nine in the right direction. Rachel, I'm going to say farewell. It's not goodbye because I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Lovely. But I feel you've done an amazing job so far. You've been incredibly honest and honest with yourself, which is such a hard thing to do. We've started turning this baby round. Good. And what I'd love you to do is to keep on decluttering. Yes. To work on Rachel's guide for Talkie. Yes. And most of all, stay positive. Yes. Bye. Bye bye. It's been a roller coaster couple of days. The truth is, I really want number nine to succeed. I just hope that all this emotional outpouring will help Rachel move on and help her put her business first. Just a few days later, and there's concrete evidence that Alex's plan is working. Rachel is throwing out the old and giving number nine a much needed spring clean. Also unmistakable is the change in her mood. The brochure's coming on really well. I have been out a lot more and it's done me a lot of good, I think, as well. It seems that creating Rachel's guide to Torquay has given her the nudge she needed. I've got some identity back again. I can now go out and face people. Hey, that was a good one. Back at number nine, Alex's design team have arrived. For only £5,000, they're giving room for a subtle 50s update that Rachel can use as a template for the rest of her hotel. And downstairs, the dining room will get the same treatment. Oh, joy of joy. Number nine is a hive of activity. With the rooms taking shape, Rachel is using her new contacts to good effect. Hi, Stuart. <laughs> nice to see you. How are you doing? Stuart from the Hillcroft is also an experienced handyman and has been roped in to shed some light at the B&B. It's been very nice to meet them. Yes, it's a lot better. I don't feel completely alone any longer. It's been three weeks and the hotel inspector is back in Torquay and she hits the ground running. Here I am back at number nine for the final push. This time round, I want to make sure that the building is up to scratch. So I've come to help put the final touches on the new rooms, which I'm dying to have a look at. This looks much nicer. It's not quite straight, Dolly. It needs to go up at the left a bit. Have you got a shelf in here? Yeah, yeah, that's about to go up. But before she allows Rachel to see her new rooms, Alex wants to see the final draft of Rachel's Guide to Torquay. It looks wonderful. Right. <laughs> Do you like it? Yes. Rachel's favourite excursions and places to visit. All right. Dear guest, I have put together a few of my favourite places that I enjoy visiting and also various excursions I like to go on. Rachel, I am so impressed. Are you? Yes, well oh, done. Thanks very much. Well, it was quite good because it did actually get me out and about, which that was, was nice. That was a little bit of the plan. Oh, I thought so. it was. <laughs> and how are your spirits? Good. Yeah, I feel very optimistic. What I love is the fact that you have just really thrown yourself into this project. That is what's going to make the difference. Yes. The fact that you're attacking what you yes. need to do yes. and that nothing's going to stand in your way. And no, that, it's not. That is what success is built on. A successful bed and breakfast is also built on the standard of its decor and layout. The once dreary and drab dining room is now a clean and bright eating space that every guest can enjoy. Oh, oh my goodness me. It's a bit better, Look at isn't it? This. It's absolutely wonderful. And the carpets and and the colour of the paint. And look at the blinds. Oh, they're beautiful. And there's two very nice oh. Vogue pictures. Look. Let's have a look. Oh yes. I love the red one. I do too. I it's do too. Great. 
No more bits and bobs, Alex, <laughs> ever, ever again. Do you promise? I promise I'm going to keep it simple like this, definitely. This is now going to become a much more functional room for you. And the cluttered, all pink room four is now a light, spacious and sophisticated bedroom. But will it get the seal of approval? <gasps> My goodness me! I don't believe it. Do you like it? It's just marvellous. It's beautiful. Oh, Alex, it's absolutely <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Alex. Oh, just look. I love that paper. Good. I really do. It's very tasteful. Oh! <laughs> look at this! And even the bathroom is flushed with success. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, what we now want to do is make sure that you get busy. Yes. So I want you to sell, sell, sell. With this in mind and the work finished, Alex wants to open the doors of number nine to the local hoteliers and business people. She wants Rachel to organise a 50s themed cocktail party so she can make more local contacts. The pressure is on, and Rachel takes to it with a renewed confidence. Listen, I've just suddenly realised you are coming, aren't you? OK, then. Bye. But unbeknownst to her, one of the guests booked in tonight is an undercover inspector from Visit Britain. With an official rating, number nine will go on approved accommodation lists and websites. It's just what the B&B needs Hello. to up its occupancy rate. No, very Hi. nice to meet you. Did you have a good journey? Yeah, not bad, actually. No. Alison Barham will spend the night, have breakfast and check out in the morning. Only then will she reveal her true identity. There's a little thing here, Rachel's favourite excursion is for you. True to form, Rachel takes Alison on a guided tour of the new look number nine. Right, well, here we are. Here's the lounge. Um, you're very welcome to come and sit in here if, you, if you'd like to, you know. This is the dining room. OK. It's where you'll be having breakfast. My garden. It's a lovely garden. It's south-facing and you just get the sun all day. Number nine is about to go back in time. Rachel Roth has been preparing a 1950s cocktail party to celebrate the new look B&B and her newfound enthusiasm. It's just marvellous. It's beautiful. After a rocky journey, Alex has steered number nine in the right direction. But it's now time for Rachel to stand on her own two feet. Judgment Day has arrived. Alison Barham from Visit Britain has spent the night undercover, sampled breakfast, and is now assessing the rest of the B&B. Later today, she will reveal if number nine has won a star rating. But downstairs, a blissfully ignorant Rachel is more concerned about the 80-plus guests that will soon descend upon number nine. I'm just beginning to get into panic mode, which isn't very good. I've never really made cheese balls, so it's a bit sort of... Uh, I'm making, a, making it up, actually, but uh, it is a little bit daunting and Alex is going to be here and I do want it to be right. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to panic. With Rachel in a world of her own, upstairs, Alison has finished her assessment. A good star rating would make a huge difference to the B&B's appeal. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, would you like to take um, one of my cards? Yes, yeah, sure. For future reference? Maybe we could do a swap. I'm actually from Visit Britain. I've come oh, to do your assessment. You? Bit of a surprise. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope everything went all right. It was for very you. comfortable. Thank good. you. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 That's great. Okay. So what we need to do um, is to sort of have a chat, really. Okay, Rachel. I've had a look round all the rooms, and obviously the room I stayed in was not one of the refurbished ones. I think there's there's tweaking that could still be done in the rooms as they exist. 
I think the, the, you know, the ones that you've already done are a really good standard and I think most people would be more than happy to stay here. And the rating that we are going to award you is um, three star. Well, it's a good start, isn't it? It's an excellent start. Yes. It's very good. Yeah, it's very good. Well, I think what it was like when I first came. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a jolly good start, yes. Excellent. Good. <laughs> good. Three stars is a remarkable achievement for Rachel and a great launch pad to increase the B&B's occupancy rate. And what better way to celebrate number nine's success than to have a 1950s themed cocktail party? Alex is back just in time to find out the good news. Rachel! Alex, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? I know tonight's the night of the party, yes, but yes. just quickly, you've had Visit Britain here. I have. How did you do? I got three stars and I'm going in their guidebook. Are you happy? Yes, very happy. It's a good start, isn't it? It is, darling, yes. well done. Yes, thanks very much. <laughs> but there's no time to celebrate as number nine starts to fill with guests. Rachel takes the opportunity to show off her B&B &B to the great and the good of the local hotel industry. It's OK, isn't it? How long have you put the bar in? That's very clever. Yes. That's yeah. really <laughs> Alex throws herself into the party. Who doesn't have a cocktail? I got a peanut for money. Every time I come back, the place looks better, brighter, more cared for. Rachel seems still incredibly positive and I think that's a very good sign because Rome wasn't built in a day. It's going to take a long time to turn this business around, but all the signs are positive. The party's a great success and everyone, it seems, has a good word for Rachel. I think the 50s theme is great. I think that ought to be brought out a little more, if anything. It's something which gives it an identity and I think it's very important. It's just so different. It's completely unique. And Rachel's just so, you know, she's got that personal touch and it's, it's just really, really nice. As the sun sets on the English Riviera and the final guests leave, all that remains is for Alex to sit Rachel down one last time. So the best moment and the worst moment for you were? Right, well the best moments I think was today. Yeah. It was so lovely to see the hotel full of people enjoying themselves. And uh, yes, it was lovely. You know, the month or so before you, you, you arrived, Alex, it, it, it was a hard time. And uh, I feel a lot better now. You look transformed. You look very cheerful. Um, I'm thrilled to see so many people here. Uh, you know, keep on building on your contacts. Make sure that they're doing the best they can to sell for you. Keep on trying to renovate as the money comes in mm -hmm. because I think that just will make such a difference to your own outlook. And, um, and finally, I hope with all my heart that your number nine becomes the success it deserves to be. Thank you very much, Alex. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving number nine with a real smile on my face. The difference in Rachel is amazing, and I just hope she can find the grit to keep on going and make sure that number nine becomes the success that she deserves.